Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Platt Arena. I'm Noah Tobias along with Bray Snyder, and thank you for joining us right here on FDN Sports. Uh, Bray, we got a really interesting championship game here for the yep. NS Bros Championship between the Huntington University Foresters and the Trinity International University. So, really, big thing with Trinity coming from last year to this year is that they lost four of their five starters. Uh, so they lost a ton, but the big guy this year is Greg Carlisle. He's averaging 22 points with eight steals so far this season. And so far starting out the season with going through three games, he is 12 of 19 for three-pointers, which is 63%, a big number by Carlisle. Yeah, actually going through four games, he's sitting at 12 of 19. I mean, he is doing very well and with his brother. Brother also averaging 17 points per game. So those two right there, something to watch for. And we see them on the floor for almost every single game with each other. Those two know what they're doing. But you, you just got to you gotta look at the game that we saw last night. The team as a whole is just so well disciplined. It's going to be interesting to see how this matchup shapes up today for the Foresters because Trinidad International definitely has experience. You mentioned losing four out of five starters. You would know that if you were watching them just for the first time this weekend, and obviously you mentioned championship here in the Ness Brothers uh, Classic. I think it'll be a good game to watch, Noah. We saw the Foresters come out a little cold shooting last night, as we've seen on the season. Uh, but I'm so optimistic to see, you know, maybe Connor Platt, Mason Coverstone start hitting from behind the arc. Yeah, so yesterday, Trinity defeated Clark 93-89. to uh, That is how Trinity came to the championship, and Huntington defeated IU Northwest 92-89. To 99, and uh, just right before this game, uh, Clark ended up beating IU Northwest. Uh, so big game for Clark. Uh, did a really good job uh, just coming into this game and getting that W. Uh, they will actually be seeing Huntington next weekend yeah. at that next tournament. Yeah. So they'll be facing Huntington again. That'll be a neutral site, and that'll be next Friday. Uh, but I think it's fun just to see all the squads that we've had out here. It's been good competition. Obviously, a close game last night. 99-92, Foresters beat IU Northwest. It was just a fun game to watch. And, of course, Indiana also dropped to Indiana State last night as well. So IU, a little work to be done. But <laughs> Foresters, I mean, I think they've been playing well uh, to start off the season. Maybe a few games haven't gone the way they've liked. Certainly room for improvement, but I'm optimistic today. Yeah, definitely. Huntington, they're back to 2-2 two and two on the season, so they're even. We'll have to see if they can get a win here tonight to bring that above average. Uh, I mean, that with a win here, especially against the height that Trinity brings to them, would be a, a real confidence booster yeah. to the squad. Yeah, and this Trinity International team is a very good team, no doubt about it. But Mike Bush obviously averaging 19 points per game right now. Tyler Aaron's just under 24. I'm looking to see more guys step up because Trinity International averaging well in the upper double digits. Forrester's averaging right around 70, 75 right now. And the offense is a little lackluster, to be honest. We're used to seeing them shoot from well beyond the arc. Just haven't seen that yet this season. And we know that guys will get warmed up as the season goes along. But Trinity International, you've got guys, you've got five different guys that are averaging double figures. Forrester's going to need to find a way to match up against them. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I mean, like we've been talking about the past few games, two people to really look out for for Huntington is Mike Bush and Tyler Ahrens. Tyler Ahrens, he has been doing a very good job uh, with his blocks. He's number four individually for blocks per game and also fifth individually for total blocks this season. Uh, yes. Great way to start out the season. And then, of course, Mike Bush, number one for assists per game. Uh, you can expect I mean, that to pretty much stay the same all year, <laughs> given what we saw last year from him. Yeah. And from uh, going from yesterday to today, he went from fifth individually to third individually for total assists for the season. Yeah. So you know that yeah. uh, as games go on, that number will rise, and hopefully – you know, he'll stay, again, number one for assists yeah. for the entire season. Well, also, on that point, I expect to see that number jump up quite a bit uh, just on total assists because you, when you start seeing guys knocking down shots outside, that number's only going to rise. His floor awareness is just off the chart, so he's seeing, you see all the dumps inside. It's just really fun to watch him because he'll shovel the ball off when you don't expect it, but as soon as we start hitting shots from beyond the arc, I think it'll be a pretty fun game to watch. Yeah, yesterday seeing Tyler Aarons have 28 points and Mike Bush with 27 yeah. points, I mean, that's just yeah. a great... That's, I mean, that's a great stat sheet to look at, definitely. Yeah. So with a little under a minute left to go here before the game, we will take a quick break right here from Platt Arena. Again, I'm Noah Tobias. That's Bray Snyder, and we are FDN Sports.
when a family has to make one of the biggest decisions of their lives, they need more than a realtor. I need a house. They need an extraordinary team of experts working day in and day out to provide service and knowledge to get the job done right. Anything short of intensity, passion, and drive is unacceptable. Introducing the Ness Brothers, an unstoppable force of realtors here to turn the biggest decision of your life into a walk in the park. In five, four, three, two, one for the music. Hello and welcome to FDN News. I'm Kelsey Cruz. Hi everyone and welcome down to Forest Glen Park. I'm Logan Hines. Hello, it's Hannah here on Forrester Radio 105.5 FM WQHU. That was just brother with Need to Breathe and up next we have Hillsong with Touch the Sky. Once the floodwaters go down for This program I felt like really prepared me well for what it would be like to be in the news industry. From yesterday to today, the water has certainly risen and spread. You become a one-man band by the time you graduate, which that's something that people are looking for. People who can shoot, write, and edit all their own stuff. I was definitely blessed enough to come in and, and I started calling games right away as a play-by-play -play announcer. Longley tipped. Down and in, and the Forrester is taking the second set. Mateo with a nice cutback. She'll take the hit left foot. That's oh, in. Takes the three. That's good. <laughs> Through FD and Force, you know, it's really going to feel like uh, a professional setting. I'm, I'm looking to really just take it to the next level, really just upgrade this FDN Sports and uh, let people know that, you know, FDN Sports is here to stay. We're here to battle with everyone. With radio, students definitely thrive here just because we are hands-on right away. I have a little weekend weather update for you here. Friday, it looks like it's going to be absolutely beautiful, a high of 72. I think radio and podcasting is a great way to have other people's stories shared, whether that be their testimonies or me just having the chance to talk to people and be able to pour into them in some sort of way. In the past couple of years, we have taken huge strides. We also do live shots, we're doing more news packages, doing more stories that affect the community. With all the politics going on recently, we've been able to do stories about that. More a lifetime asset than an education. And God bless you. And I will <laughs> let my future take care of itself. And vote for Donald Trump. Hey, keep it locked right here on Forrester Radio 105.5 FM. Well, that's going to do it for us. Here at FDN Sports, I'm Logan Hunt. Long well, that's all we have for you in this installment of FDN News. Um, when I set foot on Huntington's campus for the first time, I just knew that this was the place I was supposed to be, and that decision forever changed my life. I was a new Christian at the time, um, but I grew so much while I was at Huntington. I felt known, and I felt valued there, and the education department was just so great. In fact, I found a job before I even graduated, and I believe that's because my classes at Huntington equipped me to do so. I'm fulfilling my goal of serving others through teaching, and because of Huntington's impact on me, I now have that desire to pass on those values to all my students. In high school, my life felt empty in a way. I was living in a world full of temptations and distractions, and I, I needed to be transformed, I guess you could say. Here at Huntington, there are many ways that I experienced that transformation. As a film major, I feel encouraged by my friends, upperclassmen, and by my professors. Other students and staff are willing to pass on their knowledge, and that inspires me to do the same towards others. My ultimate goal in life is to become a filmmaker who gives back. I want to give people that energy and passion that I feel after watching a film. I want to go out in the world and give thanks to God for the gifts He has given me, making good art and be the spark of encouragement that can transform the lives of others. I play volleyball and softball here at Huntington, and the girls I play with, I can tell that they care about me more than just an athlete. They care about me as a person, and I know the relationships I have with my teammates are friendships, and I'm gonna have those for the rest of my life. And I think a huge part of that is due to the atmosphere that Huntington creates. Welcome back to Flat Arena for today's championship contest between Trinity and the Huntington University Foresters. Bray, what can you tell us about the starters from Trinity? Well, so you've got obviously your Carlisle brothers that I expect are gonna do some good work today. Number two, Greg Carlisle with 22 points per game, eight steals, eight turnovers, but also eight assists. So he's about two to one uh, in the positive. His brother, the younger, as well, Jeremy Carlisle with 14.7 points per game. We also got the seven-footer. He'll be starting. We talk about him, obviously, in warm-ups, Noah, but Rick Wright 
I expect to see him do some good work. Yeah, definitely. He will be a huge threat to Huntington University's kind of shorter lineup. But really, I mean, Tyler Aarons, not necessarily that short being 6'8". But starters for the Foresters will be number three, Connor Platt. He is a 6'2 sophomore guard out of Huntington, Indiana. Graduated from Huntington, also really just right across the street from Huntington University. And coming out with number 10, obviously we've been talking about this guy all season long, talked about him uh, all season long last season. Uh, number 10, Mike Bush, but really, Mike doing a ton of great things on the assist side. Uh, really great uh, job just with uh, seeing the floor, doing just about everything with 27 points last night. And then uh, number 20, Mason Coverstone. He is a 6'6 junior forward out of Columbia City, Indiana. Graduated from Columbia City High School. Uh, started quite a few, uh, all, all the games so far this season. Really wanting to see a big season out of him so far this year. Uh, and then number 24, Andrew Yoder. He is a 6'4 sophomore forward out of Peru, Indiana. I'm sorry, out of Sipshawana, Indiana. And then also number 44, Tyler Aarons is a 6'8 junior forward out of Sweetster, Indiana. Again, big things from him. He got 28 points last night and 11 rebounds. This Forster squad really winning this championship. Four great teams in this tournament to, uh, so far this weekend and be huge for their confidence to come out with a victory. Yeah, Trinity though, we mentioned the Stars, they lost last year four out of their five, but definitely a veteran squad. You've got the Junior Carlisle brothers, O'Shea Williams, a junior, Tyrone Carey, a junior, Rick Wright, the only sophomore on the floor. These guys have played with each other, and obviously we saw by the way they played last night, they know what they're doing. For the tip number 34, Rick Wright, the 7-1 sophomore is gonna go up against Tyler Ahrens, the 6'8 junior. And the ball game is underway. Aaron's kind of got a little piece of that, so I'd say that that's a victory for him as number 11, Jeremy Carlisle, brought the ball up. 7-1 right now. Rebound to Andrew Yoder. Right just did not release that very quickly at all. Andrew Yoder now with the ball, giving it to Mason Coverstone. Thought about giving it back to Yoder. Tipped out of bounds by number four, O'Shea Williams. Williams, a big part of that victory yesterday. And that's what we're talking about. That defensive pressure is going to be there all night for Trinity. You saw Yoder uncomfortable with the ball. If he's going to be in, he's going to have to make passes like that one to Coverstone, but not a great finish from Coverstone there. Yeah, Coverstone really tried to force as number 23, Johnson, brings the ball up, gives it to Carey. Carey to Williams. Williams all the way over to Johnson, getting it in to right. Back out to Jeremy. Tipped away, stolen now by Connor Platt. Over to Andrew Yoder on the right side. Aaron's is going to have a much more difficult time tonight getting that three ball off just because of Wright's height. It's going to be something for us to watch for. Mike Bush with the ball, driving towards the right side. Goes to the inside, pass out to Coverstone, over to Platt. Three point is good by Platt. It's good to see him hit his first of the night, Noah, just because of how, how slow they've been recently. I want to see him start hitting and start off the game. Yeah, definitely. He has been in a little bit of a slump, only averaging nine points a game. Really want to see better things from the sophomore as Wright barely has to get off the ground to make that dunk. That's Three. something the Forces are going to have to watch out for, Noah, because with his height, you leave him for one second. We saw what Tyler Aarons and Mason Coverstone were doing at the first possession, which is one in front, one behind, making it hard for him to get a shot off. 3-2, Forsters ahead of Trinity as Connor Platt gets another two points to go. He had the first five points of yesterday's contest as well. Well, shot selection's there for him early, which is what I like to see. You have to be careful of that later in the game, you know, as you start heating up, make sure you're shooting good shots. Carey with the ball, out to Carlisle for three, no good, rebounded by Coverstone. Well, a good block out by Coverstone as well there. That was on number 24, Tyrone Carey. Mike Bush going to the inside, out to Andrew Yoder. Three point is good. 
eight to two now. Forster's ahead of Trinity with a little over 17 minutes to go. Well, Williams tried to set up for the charge there. Didn't get it on the other end. We saw just a no call from the official. Certainly comes back the other way, Joe tries to get it back. Andrew Yoder picking up his first foul. Team's first, game's first. Now at the line, number four, O'Shea Williams. So far, O'Shea has is seven of 16 from the free throw line, which is 44%. So really not the greatest from the free throw line. Yeah, both teams shooting pretty poorly from the free throw line. Usually, especially at the start of the season, you expect guys to hit as they're not usually too tired, but both teams shooting below 70%. Number usually two. won't get it done for a, <laughs> for a collegiate squad. Number two, Greg Carlisle, and number three, Sam Schroeder come in for Trinity. As Williams sets up for his second free throw attempt, and that's good. Eight to four, Forster's still ahead of Trinity. Mike Bush with the ball, driving towards the inside, back out to Coverstone. Pump fake that three-point shot, gives it to Connor Platt. Back out to Andrew Yoder. Andrew puts up a three, and that is good. 11 to four here in Platt Arena. Well, good job by Connor Platt, not forcing the shot up there. Had a guy on him, looked out to the left, and should good, good catch and shoot from Yoder. And 11, Jeremy with the missed three-point attempt, rebound by Connor Platt. Almost knocked away by Williams. Andrew Yoder, breakaway, easy layup for him. Another great pass from Platt to Yoder. That's what I like to see, that full court transition kept the ball in a nice find. Maybe something to do with them being roommates has something to do with it. As Jeremy Carlisle goes up, misses a layup. Rebounded by Johnson. Johnson gets swatted, and a foul is called. Coverstone thought he had all ball. The official saw something different as number 20, DJ Ostrander gets called. I'm sorry, number 20, so that's Mason Coverstone gets his first foul. Team second as 23, Thaddeus Johnson at the line. Misses his first. Coming back in, number 24, Tyrone Carey. Checks in for number 11, Jeremy Carlisle. That was just a big boy move by Thaddeus Johnson down there. He grabbed that board. Wasn't going to let that be tipped out. And his second free throw attempt is good. 5-13, to 13, Trojans down by 8. Mike Bush bringing the ball up the floor. Guarded closely by Greg Carlisle. Spin move to the inside, over to Mason Coverstone. Easy two-point bucket for Coverstone. That's just really good defense by Carlisle, but better offense by Bush. He's got eyes everywhere on his head. I don't know how many he has, but he's got more than two for sure. Greg Carlisle shooting for three. No good, rebound by Mason Coverstone. And gives it over to Mike Bush, and he will bring the ball up for the Foresters going towards the right side. And chip by number 23, Thaddeus Johnson. That'll be his first, team's first of this first half. A little over, seven, little over uh, 16 minutes left to go. Looks like Sam Bauer also checked in there for Trinity International. Both teams pretty deep. We've already seen this in the tournament, Noah, but both teams pretty deep and going to that bench. Yeah, definitely. Coach is very comfortable putting different players in in different situations. Connor Platt gets a charging call on him. Yeah, if you're Connor Platt there, you got to be very careful. You either try to come to a complete jump stop and go up with it. And this will bring us to our first media timeout. 15 to five, Forsters lead the Trojans. We will be right back, right here in Platt Arena. It's just an incredible feeling to know that you are handing these folks the keys to a life-changing house. It's not, it's not just a house, it's not just walls and windows. It's a home that they get to bring up their family in, bring up their kids in, and show their kids what it means to get out of poverty and to make a better life for themselves. My name is Casey Cole Morgan. I'm the Executive Director at Huntington County Habitat for Humanity. We are a construction company. We are a mortgage company. We are a financial institution. We are advocates for families. We are a budgeting center. And on top of it, uh, we are also a retail store. 
So we have we wear a lot of hats as an organization. Um, our main focus is to serve the community any way we can, and so we want to help families em empower themselves and 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 find a better life uh, through through the process of home ownership. The the need is so great, and that. Back here in Platt Arena, Foresters lead the Trojans 15 to five. And number four, Williams, will be bringing up the basketball for the Trojans. Williams just dribbling up top, gets it to Johnson. Back to Carey. Carey brings it inside against Connor Platt. Goes up for two. That's an easy two-point bucket against Platt. And Tyler Ahrens trying to get the ball in. Gives it to Platt. Again, Trinity is just such a big team. Guards are a little smaller, like Mike Bush, but they just have such an easy job working their way inside and backing guys down. Bush trying to direct traffic just a little bit. Bush gives it to Tyler Ahrens. Fish says, Williams straight up. Williams with the ball over to Carlisle for three. No good. Rebounded by 24 carry. Williams gets the ball and goes inside for a layup. And that's a good job by the Trojans getting up off the glass. I'll say their first few shots, you saw that. No, they didn't do a good job of rebounding on offense, and it was one and done for them. Past few possessions, they get that second board, and they're going up and scoring. Bush with the basketball, 15 to 9. Guarded by Johnson now. Bush going inside, coming back, back out. Platt now with the ball. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Over to Bush. Bush cuts to the inside. Back out to Mason Coverstone. He shoots a three. That's no good. Rebounded by Tyler Ahrens. Tyler thinks about going back up. He does and gets a foul. That foul will be called on number 23, Thaddeus Johnson. His second, team second. So a little bit of foul trouble early on in this game for Johnson. Well, yeah, two on him, but again, rebounding on both sides offensively is a lot better than defensively. Aaron's went up and got that board, and the pass from Bush was a little high that time to Coverstone. I think if Coverstone catches that at his chest, he's going up immediately and he's in rhythm. Had to pull that ball back down and get the shot up. Aaron misses his first free throw attempt as number 34, Rick Wright, and number 11, Jeremy Carlisle, come in for the Trojans. And to be honest, Aaron's shooting at 66% on the year. Not preferable, you know, not what you want, but not terrible for the squad. We know this is probably going to be a tough matchup, though, Noah, later in the game. And free throws are going to matter for both squads. You know, every, every free throw is going to count. Every point is going to count. Zach Owens comes in for Andrew Yoder for the Foresters. I like seeing him in there in the in the block. I always like seeing the little guards try to get in there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Tyler Aarons now, second free throw attempt up and good. And Trevor Lockwood will make a substitution for him. I will say, maybe the legend of the pregame nap getting started during warmups. For two games now this season, he's just sort of late at half court. Number 11, Carlisle with the ball all the way over to number 24, Carey. To his brother, Greg. Back to Jeremy. Carey now driving the ball inside against Lockwood. Tipped by Lockwood. Gets his own rebound. All the way over to Greg. Shoots a three, and that's good. And that's just bad defense by the Foresters. You've got two guys that came out in the corner to try and guard Carey. Not getting anything done for it when you got two guys mashing up against one, leaving a shooter on the outside. Platt with the three-point attempt. Partially blocked and rebounded by Greg. As Greg brings the ball up himself, looking for something as he gives it to his brother Jeremy and a traveling violation called on Jeremy Carlisle. Yeah, turnover is something that Carlisle struggled a little bit with on the year. That's eight to his, or excuse me, that's number 11. That's not his brother. Number 11, Jeremy Carlisle, he's been doing a better job. And he's also assisted well. Only one turnover to his 11 assists. Almost coming up with another steal there, Noah. Yeah, very dangerous pass. Just trying to get it inbounds, trying to make something happen. Mason Coverstone kind of looking like he's trying to come up and make a little cut as Connor gets it to Mike. Well, Mike's asking just for a little room to himself. We know he can work around. Good defense from the Carlisle brothers. Bush gets it to Owens. Owens behind the back. And throws the ball away. 
as Connor Platt was cutting to the inside. Sometimes you see freshmen come in just trying to get used to the flow of the game again. You got bigger and older guys than when you were in high school. Sometimes you just get a little anxious with your passing on the outside. Definitely. Jeremy passes it to Bauer and now all the way over to his brother Greg. Carey now with the ball back to Jeremy. Passes it to Greg on the left side, driving in over to right, and easy two points for the seven foot one sophomore. Yeah, and Rick Wright was wide open there after Lockwood came off of him. If you're Lockwood, you got to stay on that seven footer. Bush with the ball, giving it to Owens. He drives the inside, gives it to Lockwood. Easy two points for him now. Great pass by Owens. That's the floor vision that we're going to need to see from him as a freshman. And that can only get better as Jeremy Carlisle goes up, gets a swallow away. Bounces off his head, and it will remain. It will go to the Foresters as number four O'Shea Williams checks in for the Trojans, and number 35 Kyle Platt will sub in for number 20 Mason Coverstone. 18 to 14, the Foresters though shooting well on offense. It's really giving them a bump early. Number 12 Nate Schmidt also came in in that last possession. And traveling violation called on Zach Owens. Mike Bush looking over the sideline. Maybe trying to get some new bodies on the floor. Just getting caught up a little bit. You hear coaches all the time talk about always having a play and never getting caught up in the air because if you're trying to find a pass in the air, you land on the ground, that's an easy travel call. Junior comes in for the Foresters, checking in for Zach Owens as Jeremy Carlisle with the ball right now on the right side of the court. Gives it in to Williams, and Williams will pick up. I'm sorry. Oh, 14, Junior Scott will pick up his first foul. Team's fourth. Well, you saw Williams posting up really nicely inside. Scotch's a little shorter, had to figure out how to get on that. Back out to Greg, I'm sorry, Jeremy Carlisle. Missed three, rebounded by Connor Platt. Jeremy did a good job of going after his rebound as Mike Bush now with the ball, bringing it up for the Foresters. Guarded by O'Shea Williams as he gives it over to Junior. Back to Bush, over to Kyle Platt. Platt goes to the inside, passes it to his brother Connor, and that three is good, 21 to 14 now. Good to see Kyle back in. He's, he's assisted well in the season. He's been passing well, especially to his brother. That's a good find on the opposite side of the court. And Williams now with the traveling violation. Substitution now for the Trojans, number two, Greg Carlisle. He'll check in for his brother, Jeremy. As 11 minutes, 40 seconds left to go here in this first half of basketball. Connor Platt inbounding the ball all the way out to Kyle Platt and gives it off to Mike. Mike sprinting down the court, giving, giving it to Trevor Lockwood. Easy two-point basket for Lockwood. Gets down inside, having to power it up just a little bit. Well, the Carlisle brothers are doing a great job on defense against Bush, but he's just doing such a great job passing over top and finding open bodies. Up top, Carey with the basketball. Carey driving in on Connor Platt. Turn around, up for two, and that's good. That's just a strong big boy move. We talk about Carey and Johnson just really eating Connor Platt up right now on the offensive side. Mike Bush with the ball. Quarter closely against Greg Carlisle. Out to Junior Scott. And traveling violation. That was an easy call by the official. Checking in now, number three, Sam Schroeder. He'll come in for a number 12, Nate Schmidt. Ball inbounded into Greg as he brings the ball up. Guarded by Mike Bush. Carey now with the ball. And that's going to be an offensive foul on number four, O'Shea Williams. That will be his first personal foul, team's third. That's a few calls on him that he hasn't liked these past few possessions. Just getting caught up, getting a little physical down the post. Yeah, and he was like that yesterday too, I noticed. Getting himself in a little bit of trouble, but you know, a decent job of 
getting himself out and recovering yesterday. So we'll have to see if he does that again today as Junior Scott now passes all the way over to Connor Platt. Wide open three-point shot and no good. Rebounded by Wright. And up for two points, easy layup, no good by Greg. Giving it over to Junior Scott now for the Foresters. Stolen by O'Shea Williams. And foul on Junior Scott, that will be his second personal foul. And quick substitution now for the Trojans. Number 33, Sam Bauer comes in for Wright. And Andrew Yoder comes in for Connor Platt. Andrew Yoder gave a few good minutes at the start. And it's that energy, I think, that sort of gets him off. He, he hit a few shots, had some nice finds as well with Connor Platt. I want to see him score a little more, though, you know, on that offensive side. He's got the, he's got the build to attack the rim. Definitely. I would say that that's definitely something that he needs to work on, is being more confident shooting that basketball as 24 carry with the ball. Driving to the inside. Pass to Bauer. Over to Greg. Coming in against Andrew Yoder, giving it to Bauer. Great pass by Carlisle. Yeah, and Yoder gave up the baseline on that play. You never want to give up the baseline to a guy attacking, especially when you've got a guy helping you out double team because you're basically taking yourself out of the play if you're letting him get around you there. Bush with the ball. Guarded against Carey. And that foul will go against Tyrone Carey. That will be his first personal foul. Team fourth as number 23, Thaddeus Johnson, comes back into this game as well as number 44, Tyler Ahrens and Kyle Platt. Andrew Yoder inbounding the ball to Junior Scott. Junior Scott wide open lane now, going to the inside, and great layup for him. Kind of had to salvage what happened after he almost lost that ball, but did a good job turning the ball, just keeping it out of Greg Carlisle's hands. Yeah, Carlisle is definitely a fighter as he goes to the inside to Johnson, to Carey, and then now long three-pointer rebounded by Andrew Yoder. Junior Scott now with the ball. Telling his team to settle down just a little bit. I like that, I like it when they're telling the team just to settle down, lots of energy now. Yoder passing it in to Kyle Platt. Back out to Junior Scott. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Junior Scott pulls up two, air balls. Looked like it was tipped a little bit, rebounded by Schroeder. Carrying that with the ball, all the way over to Greg Carlisle. Thought about going baseline, now back to number three, Schroeder. Back to Greg, three point shot is good. 21 to 25, Trinity only trailing the Foresters by four points. And that's good shot selection by the junior. Just, you know, when you're working down baseline, not able to get anything, pull the ball back out, the game will present itself to you. Taking a good shot there. Trinity's starting to get on a run offensively right now. Junior Scott to Tyler Aarons. Two point basket, no good. Tip back up, no good again. Tyler Aarons still fighting for the ball, not able to get it. Finally, Carey able to make full contact with it. Johnson now outside with the basketball to Carey on top. Carey thinking about going inside, he does. Back out to Schroeder. Long three point basket, no good. Rebounded by Tyler Aarons. Junior Scott now bring the ball up. Go to the inside, back out to Andrew Yoder. Three-point basket, no good. Rebounded by Connor Platt. Over to Tyler Aarons and to Junior Scott. Now to Connor Platt to the inside. Basket, no good. And rebounded by number 24, Carey. Greg Carlisle now. Three-point basket, no good. And Forsters will just let that ball. Actually, no, that ball was tipped. So that'll stay with the Trojans. As Jeremy Carlisle, right. We'll come back in for the Trojans and we'll go to a media timeout. 25-21, Forcers lead the Trojans. We will be right back. FDN News is our campus news station. And we are just a news station that shines Christ's light on campus and in the Huntington community. Whether that be going to a presidential rally or talking about the meal plans on campus, um, everything we do, we do for the glory of God. With news, you have such a great opportunity to go out to hear people's stories and tell their stories and to be light and to share that light. So 
my goal for FDN News is first and foremost that students would learn, that they would engage, they would learn a little bit about themselves, about communicating with others, refine their skills, and become expert storytellers for the kingdom of Christ. The benefit to coming to Huntington and being in the Forrester Digital Network is you get hands-on experience. So we have some freshmen coming in that week one, they are taking a camera out and they are... Back here in Platte Arena, 25-24, sorry, 25-21, Forcers lead the Trojans. Officially telling the Trojans to come out to the floor now. Really, Forster's doing a decent job uh, with ball movement. Really hasn't been a lot of standing around, which I really liked seeing. Last last night there was a little bit of that, and they ended up having a 12-point lead, but uh, losing that fairly quickly as Wright couldn't handle the pass from Carey, and so the Foresters will get the possession. Yeah, it's miscommunication there between Carey and Wright. This coach had to be frustrated with uh, timeout and you get an offensive possession and uh, not getting that. Tyler Aarons now with three point opportunity. No good. Rebounded by Connor Platt though. Connor Platt in the corner. Needs to get out. Takes one dribble. Picks it up. And Tyler Aarons now with the ball. Giving it to Mike Bush. Now Jeremy Carlisle on him. You see the, the, the brothers switching it up. Mason Coverstone for three. No good. Rebounded by Andrew Yoder. Kind of fall away Took there that by ball out of Aaron's hands. <laughs> <laughs> Saying I want that rebound. Yeah. And Mike Bush now with the ball. A little shake and bake going into the inside. Mason Coverstone now with the ball and two point basket good. 27 to 21. That's what the Forces are doing a lot better of tonight than they were last night. It's finishing at the rim but finishing outside the arc as well. And Mike Bush is passing pretty much the same as we saw. It's just as good as ever. Forces just converting on the offensive end. Good defense by Andrew Yoder as Johnson now with the ball over to Carey. Carey, three-point attempt, and that's good. And if you're, if you're kind of flat, you got to go over top of that screen. Carey's hit two now. You've got to start going over top, especially because of how big he is, 200 pounds. you just got to go over top of that screen. Yeah, Carey averaging 17 points a game as Mike Bush flings up a three-point shot. No good, not even close. Carey gets the rebound, brings it up himself. Goes to the inside. He goes up for a layup, and that's good. 27-26. It's a one-point ball game here, folks. Defense just not there for the Foresters on the other end. Offense is definitely there. The attack's there from, from both sides. Mike Bush gives it to Tyler Aarons. That two-point basket is good. Long two. I was about to say, that's not a shot that I like Aarons taking, but he knocks it down, so I'm sure he's feeling it. Kiri now with three-point attempt. That's good. It's a tie ball game now. Bray, you, were, you said it. I mean, really, you got to get out on Kerry. He's starting to get really hot, and you want to get that ball away from him or just put a little bit of pressure on him as Coverstone now a three-point attempt of his own. No good rebounded by number 12, Schmidt. Well, as you were talking about that, just as a shooter, you got to know that when a shooter gets hot, you have to come out and run him off the line. He looks like he can drive. It's how big he is and how he's been able to finish tonight. But you got to get off and run him off the line. Wright could not get the basketball in the hoop. He got it on the hoop, but not in the hoop. Mike Bush now with the ball towards the left side of the court. Going back in. Dishes out to Andrew Yoder. Two-point basket, good. A couple longer two-pointers for the Foresters. I'd like if they could just take a couple of steps back there. Tyler Aarons was really, really close. Just one step was all needed, but... I'll be Jeremy. honest, I don't know if that's what they've been practicing, but they've actually been hitting pretty decently from just like two, three feet inside that line. And right now I'll take it, get them warmed up for maybe second half beyond the arc. Right again, not able to connect with the rim. 31-29, Foresters have possession. Mike Bush driving in on Jeremy. Dishes it out to Connor Platt. He goes to the inside. Two-point jumper, no good. Rebounded by Schmidt. Brings the ball up. Guarded by Tyler Aarons right now. Right over to Johnson. Three-point basket is good. Yeah, Trinity's just starting to hit well from the outside, which is something they weren't doing, first of all, in the very start of the first half. Second of all, they weren't rebounding. Now they're doing a better job of it, and the Foresters aren't coming out to guard that line. Trojans up by one. 
First lead of the game, Andrew Yoder over to Coverstone, over to Connor Platt, three-point basket, and no good. Rebounded by Wright. That's why you like him in there, long arms, and well, he's just really tall as Carey gets an easy layup. Timeout called by Coach Platt. It's a 30 second timeout, so we will keep it right here. Yeah, you can see him not happy there at all, and why? Defensively, not running guys off the line whenever they're hitting, but then when you got to close out and run a guy off the line, that doesn't mean give him a lane to the bucket. You got to guard him. You're talking about Johnson and talking about Carey, guys that are hitting well outside, and then you give them one step, they're by you, and just because of how big they are, 220 pounds and 200 pounds, if they get a step on you and they're going straight ahead to the basket, they're finishing that. Yeah, especially with Carey. Carey's really just been doing a great job here so far, shooting a few three-pointers. He at least has three of those, uh, but then he's also done a great job of going towards the inside, just like you were talking about, Bray. When he gets one step ahead of you, He's going to attack that and make that one step feel like 10 steps. Yeah, so he's, just, he's just explosive and he's got the body to do it. So even Yoder, one of the, I'd say one of the stronger guys on the squad, also weighs 200 pounds himself. He's just giving him that one step. You're not going to be able to beat him back to the block and cut him off. Devin Murner checks in for the first time tonight. Just trying to get a little bit more height in there as Mike Bush finally gets the ball. And Andrew Yoder will actually be taking the ball up himself. Guarded against Carey, giving it to Mike Bush. Ball taken away by Williams, and he steps out of bounds. Very, very lucky for the Foresters. If he did not step out of bounds, I'm sure we would have seen a major breakaway dunk right uh, there. He was, he was lining up for it, and he's ready. He got two early foul calls he wasn't too happy about. He saw a coach bring him over, and I, I would like to say just, Boomer Roberts, fourth season, Fortunate International. He's a veteran coach and has a really good job managing this squad, keeping their heads in the game. Definitely keeping their confidence level up as well as Yoder gets in a little bit of trouble, gives it to Bush. Outside in the cover stone to Yoder. Ten seconds on the shot clock, three minutes on the game clock. Aaron's two-point basket is good. Forster's down by one against the Trojans. And Aaron's just really feeling that left baseline, you know, about 10, 15 feet out. He's really finding that spot and setting up over top. Jeremy gives it to Bauer, stolen by Aaron's. And timeout called by the Foresters. Good timeout by Aaron's. Did a great job of getting on the floor. And just a 30 second timeout called by the Foresters. With 2.44 left. You've used the, you know, two media timeouts, one from Trinity International. I mean, I think you'll take that and you run with it. Definitely good hustle there. And that's one of the few times that we've seen Carlisle not make a great dish underneath. Sort of threw that at Wright's knees. I'm thinking if you throw just a little scoop pass and keep it off the floor, Wright's going up with that and he's throwing it down over top of Aaron's. Still lots of good ball movement from the Foresters. You really need to, to keep that up, but at the same time, make smart passes uh, with Williams getting that steal. Really lucky that he stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Trevor Lockwood checks back in for the Foresters. Tyler Aaron's got a little shaken up there when he dropped to the ground, so seeing the trainers right now. Mike Bush with the ball. Passed it over to Andrew Yoder. Fakes to the baseline, but starts going in. Mike Bush to Coverstone. Coverstone to Lockwood. Gets his own rebound, go back up. Gets his own rebound again, goes back up. And rebounded by Williams. Williams now looking to get a layup. Getting it to Carlisle. Up for three, air balls it. And Carey tried to get it off of Mike Bush. Mike Bush actually pulled it down. Bush going to the inside. Kick out to Coverstone. Three point basket, no good. Rebounded by Yoder. He's going to go up with it. Actually gives it to Coverstone, and he goes up with it. Easy two point basket. 35 34. Huntington regains the lead. And that's a good just drop and dish by him. Acts like he's going up. I think he faked you and me out, too. <laughs> Got the dump off. It's a nice pass. Jeremy giving it to Williams. Over to Greg. Greg goes to the outside, and a foul called on Coverstone. If you're Coverstone there, hands off. I mean, it's an, easy, it's an easy enough job defensively if you're just running on the sideline, especially you got the arms. Keep those hands wide, chest up. Number three, Schroeder, and number 34, Wright come back in for the Trojans as number 35, Kyle Platt. 
Checks in from Mason Coverstone. That was the second foul on Coverstone, team six. So the next foul committed by the Foresters will put the Trojans into the one and one bonus. Williams, two point basket, rolls in. He changes yet again, 36 35. With a minute 20 left to go in this first half, Bush driving in the inside, kick out to Kyle Platt, three point basket is good. And that's one of the best offenses that the Foresters have, is just Bush drawing. You saw him draw three blue jerseys at the block. Easy kick out, easy knockdown by Coverstone. And that's how he gets those assists. That's how he really averages 10 assists per game, is because he's just so good at driving the inside, kicking back out for an open three-point shot as Greg Carlisle misses the two-point jumper, rebounded by Lockwood and to Bush now. 50 seconds left to go in this first half. Bush, thinking about driving the inside, pass out to Yoder, pass out to Murder. Three-point basket is good yet again. 41-36, Forsters up by five. And fifth game of the season here. Forsters really starting to do a better job of hitting outside, warming up off that line into the first half. But uh, you mentioned up 41-36, they've done a good job in this first half. 20 seconds now on the game clock. Six seconds differential on the shot clock. Ten seconds on the shot clock now. Jeremy Williams goes to the inside. And Wright misses the dunk. Six seconds on the game clock. Over to Kyle Platt. Three-point basket, no good. Rebounded by Trevor Lockwood. Two basket, good. And that will do it for the first half. 43-36. to 36. Huge ending for the Foresters. Almost really costed him but ended up getting an easy two-point rebound and basket from Trevor Lockwood. Halftime score, 43-36. Forcers lead the Trojans, and we will be right back with some halftime statistics. The Global Initiatives uh, degree that we're offering is uh, seeking to equip folks who are interested in applying a, a ministry education to uh, cross-cultural work. So somebody who's looking to uh, do holistic ministry, somebody who's looking to uh, engage in the business for transformation or business as missions model would find uh, some equipping through our Global Initiatives degree. Our Global Youth Ministries degree is designed to prepare people for leadership in youth ministry quite simply anywhere in the globe. It's for men and women who are already in youth ministry or for people who are simply preparing to leave youth ministry. One of the things I like about the pastoral leadership track is that Luke and Karen, who worked on developing it, consulted with church leaders so that people preparing for ministry uh, leadership in the church would have the skills and the knowledge that they need. Some of what uh, I'd want our program to be known for is, is being really clear-minded about linking our own program vision with the Lord's vision for His people and for the kingdom. What we want to do is be faithful to that which He's called us to. And some of that would, would be that we believe that the Church of Jesus Christ is going to be well served when it's populated and led by people who have stories of being reached by Christ and are now being well formed to follow Him no matter what the cost.
the alumni office at Huntington University is really here to stay in touch with the alumni and graduates, as well as provide resources to them so they can reconnect. It's just really important to us that we keep in touch with them and then let them know what's going on on campus as well. Things that they might want to continue to stay involved with or maybe participate in an alumni gathering. I started getting involved as an alumni board member and we would do various projects throughout the university, throughout the year. Just being able to meet people who've graduated and to listen to their stories about the university, back then the college, and how it's grown today, it just, it's really an honor and a privilege to be a forester. I knew that this was going to be the university that I was going to graduate from, and I have friends here that will be lifelong. So one of the things that's kind of fun about our department is we have uh, regular gatherings. Uh, we call them Friday at Fairchild's House, and Dr. Mark Fairchild hosts these gatherings for our majors, and we get together, uh, I guess it's about once a month. First I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, we're gonna go hang out at a professor's house, um, but for my Greek class, he offered extra credit if we would go. So I was like, it's worth it. I'll take some friends with me and try it out and it was a ton of fun. I think that's one thing that's kind of unique about Huntington. We really are able to um, joke and, and get to know each other outside of the classroom on a personal level. Um, we really become friends, I think, with our students. The experience of being able to sit in a professor's house and engage in scholarly discussion and informal discussion over um, something faith-based is, I think, um, very unique to this university. If you look at a variety of the research regarding the top skill sets that employers are looking for, communication always ranks top five. Many times it's the top three. These are skills that are far more important, not only in job, but in life, in family context, in social context, in professional contexts. One thing that's different about Huntington University as a Christian college is that we have a journalism major. Other Christian universities and the Council of Christian Colleges and Universities have a communication major in which you then uh, subspecialize in these different areas. We have an actual major in journalism, an actual major in public relations, an actual major in communication studies. Teachers try to incorporate different aspects of like the Bible into or, or core curriculum. There's so many things that can spark, you know, you know, excitement, enthusiasm. But here you're reminded that in all of that fluff, in all of that glam, that Christ is the center and Christ is core. One aspect of Huntington University that I think makes us distinctive is the fact that 100% of our teaching faculty have PhDs. Also, um, here at Huntington University, the communication department, we offer two very different perspectives on the same field of communication. So we have two professors here that view the field quite differently and I think the students benefit from that.
in the Gospels, and I see Jesus interacting with people. I mean, he was a really good communicator, and understood people well. And that's kind of what communication is about, trying to um, be clear about what you're saying and to understand um, people. And so by, by practicing communication, I think we can become better at doing that, and I can be more like Christ in that way. At Lakeview Middle School, I am a 7th grade language arts teacher. Uh, I primarily teach 12, 13, and sometimes 14 year olds reading and writing. One of the unique things about the teacher education program at Huntington University is the uh, relationships that are developed between the faculty and students. They are super thoughtful people. They want to be a part of your life. They want to, you know, be your mentor and, and help you through this process of becoming the best teacher that you could possibly be. I have a very good relationship with a lot of my professors from Huntington and I think that's because they asked me questions that were even outside of the classroom. And then after class, like I wanted to tell them about things that were going on in my life and the exciting things um, with teaching. And because our class sizes are small, we get to know them as people, we get to know their strengths, weaknesses, because then we know how, how best to help them. And it also simply makes the whole uh, experience a lot more enjoyable. I still use a lot of the activities I learned with them with my students today. And so it was really helpful to uh, have that time with them and especially those conversations with them. I think that Huntington prepared me incredibly well for the teaching position I have now. From the beginning of when I started at Huntington, I felt like it was a place where I was able to grow as an individual as well as in the intended profession that I wanted to be in now. We actually have all, a number of elementary and middle school and uh, secondary programs. Each person that comes through the elementary program gets at least a couple of uh, different certifications. And then we have um, secondary or high school programs in a, the typical content areas like history education, English education, uh, biology education, chemistry education. Yes, you're going to be exhausted and yes, you're going to stay up crazy late writing lesson plans and making bulletin boards and curriculum. and and activities, but uh, get excited that this is going to prepare you very well for your future. I was able to figure out, even if I'm in a public school setting, how I can demonstrate my faith and show that like I am a Christian without explicitly saying it. Um, and I think that Huntington really allowed me to uh, develop a deeper understanding of what my faith was, and so that way I'm able to express my faith to, a stu to the students in a public school setting. And I do not think that I would be able to take on this role of a teacher if I had not had the structure and the support and the love from the departments and the professors at Huntington. And I'm happy to say we have a, we have a very good uh, success rate. Over the past five or six years, um, we've had a, within six months of graduation, we tend to average about a 90% employment rate. I have been completely blessed by it, by the professors, by all the hands-on experience they've given us, and I am I feel pretty prepared now, which is a great feeling. What makes the HU Music Department special, I think, is basically the people that make up the department. It's like we're one big family. Instead of just friends coming together to sing and do music work, it's more like we're a family, like just brothers and sisters. Students have an opportunity to bond with one another, being a smaller group. It gives us a chance to interact more closely with the students, uh, to answer all their kinds of questions that might uh, arise. The professors are really knowledgeable, very talented, and you can tell that they really care about individual students. We incorporate the community sometimes, so it's really good to get to meet new people from Huntington and throughout the community and just to work with everyone. The choir performs lots of times out in area churches. The function of what we do here at Huntington is to try to make musicians and also God-honoring musicians. It's very much a supportive community in the HU Music Department. So not only are you getting an excellent music education, but you are developing as a person just because you're getting to know all these great people.
Dr. Tanner Babb. I'm an assistant professor of psychology and also the head of the psychology department. Psychology is really a study of the self. It's a study of how our, our mind works, how we relate to people, friendship, dating, intimacy, conflict, and it's a class that meets college students right where they are. We have a very unique approach to teaching psychology, and I think it's also a very tight-knit program. It's a very close community, and I think a lot of students come to Huntington because they want a lot of individual attention. They want the opportunity to, to be able to talk with a professor, to build a relationship, and to be able to talk more about their education than just what occurs in class. And because of a lot of our students' specific interests, I mean, with a smaller program, we really do try to tool what students are learning to what they plan to do after they graduate. It's just a blast to teach um, because I'm able to have conversations with students as they go through relationships, as they struggle with friendships, as they try to figure out family relationships, and it really just hits at the heart of current struggles that they have. And students always leave that class feeling a lot more prepared just to be college students and prepared for the vocations they're going into. I'm very happy if my students leave Huntington knowing how to integrate their faith with psych, but also feeling very well prepared for fields where they get to work with people. My name is Anita Gray, and I'm the director. <laughs> My absolute passion is teaching students how to use credible sources. I ask them questions, have you thought about this, have you thought about that, and all of a sudden that light bulb goes on and they go, aha, and they get it. I don't think there's any better feeling in the profession than that. Uh, it's just so exciting to watch a student go through the process of learning. I've had several students and, and faculty say, you know, I went down and looked for this book and I found another one that looks really interesting, so I decided to check that one out too or I need to look a little bit more in my subject area because there are some really good materials down there. I liken it in some ways to Alice in Wonderland. You fall into the hole of the area of, of your study and Alice had constant discovery. She had to have constant discovery because strange things were happening to her. She had to learn how to get out of them or how to deal with them. And that's the same way with learning. You, you, when you start falling into that hole of a topic and you need to learn more and you need to find out more and you have to do this, and, um, sorry, I get really excited about this. That's what you can do in the library. You can go in, into the shelves, you can go into the stacks and look and see if you can find more information than what you just specifically went for. Being a theater major is so much more than singing and dancing. It's about telling a story with your performance. It's about engaging with the audience. When I put on my dancing shoes, I feel a rush. Suddenly all the pain and sweat from rehearsals is worth it. Theater demands a lot from a person, what with the long days, exhausting practices, and sore body parts. However, it's got a lot of rewards. Like when I'm getting ready for a performance in front of my boudoir, it hits me. With every stroke of makeup I put on, I realize that there is no place I'd rather be. Making an audience come alive through our acting, dancing, and singing is an irreplaceable feeling. Being a theater major is a thrilling experience that comes with emotions and excitement. It is during practices that bonds grow stronger. When I go out there and the spotlight shines on me, everything goes from black and white to color. The small, trivial things suddenly disappear when I'm in front of an audience. And that's what being a theater major is all about. Welcome back to Plat Arena. Just getting done with our halftime festivities as Four people are inducted into the uh, Huntington University Athletic Hall of Fame. Really great to see 
all the support that Huntington University shows towards their alum. And that's just one more thing to kind of showcase what they've done in their careers here at Huntington University. But today we're talking about this game, Huntington University versus Trinity International. Uh, Bray, you know, lots of things that kind of stand out to me. Where are a couple of things that stand out to you uh, statistically wise? Well, team stats for both squads doing decent shooting from the field. Uh, both teams shooting right around 45%. Forrester shooting a little better at 48%. 17 out of 37 field goals. 20 rebounds to 17 rebounds, though. They're beating Trinity right now in the rebound battle. And in the turnovers, they are wanting to hold on to the ball. They're doing a much better job of that. And also assisting 15 assists to 8 assists. Mike Bush, of course, if you were going to guess on this Forrester squad who had most of these assists right now, you'd be right if he had seven. Uh, Andrew Yoda right now though for the Force is leading point wise with ten points, four good rebounds, uh, three assists as well. Some of those assists going to Connor Platt with his eight points, five rebounds and two assists. So again shooting 49% from the field. They've been doing a lot better of a job of rebounding as well. Though. You can see that reflected in the stats. It's been pretty close but Noah I know you can talk about this a little bit too. Beginning of the game Trinity was not rebounding on their own shots. They were sitting outside waiting for balls to drop and they weren't. Forces were coming up with a lot of early rebounds towards the end of that first half, sort of changed a little bit, where Trinity has definitely been attacking the boards a lot harder. Forrester's just doing a good job maintaining distance and knocking down shots. Yeah, definitely, with Trinity uh, doing a fairly good job uh, as well. 14-32 for free, for field goals, 17 rebounds, 8 turnovers, 2 assists, and, uh, I'm sorry, 2 steals, 8 assists. Shooting 44%, Tyrone Carey, obviously the leading Trinity with 14 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. And O'Shane Williams, number 4, 6 points, 2 rebounds, 2 steals. Really the two main guys that stick out to me are those two. Um, doing a great job uh, so far here in Plata Arena. Had a good game yesterday. Both teams really wanting the championship trophy after this one. Well, I think for the Foresters too, it's not as much about the hardware as it is about just getting back in the mentality of winning because it's been a little stretch where it's just been kind of iffy watching them play at times, you know, wondering how the season's maybe going to go from behind the line, especially just because free throws and three-pointers have been, I mean, I think we can all probably agree to this, a little weak based on what we've usually seen from the Foresters. Oh, definitely. I cannot agree with you any more than what I am now. I mean, really, just the free throws are not... They're definitely not at that spot. I mean, Forster's only averaging about, uh, I think it was 63% from the free throw line. But, I mean, Trinity, they're at 67% from the free throw line. Definitely a huge thing for both teams as Huntington only shot two free throws there in the first half and Trinity only shooting four. Well, also, I mean, you can see the guard play for Trinity, not as great as for the Foresters. Mike Wish, of course, stand out. I mean, you can definitely talk about the Carlisle brothers. They've done a very good job matching up against him, putting that full court pressure on him. He just has not turned the ball over very much. And Jeremy Carlisle came out with four turnovers. O'Shea Williams with three. So that's what we're going to be watching out for here in the second half. And second half is underway with Mike Bush with the ball. And passes out to Connor Platt over to Andrew Yoder. Looking for Mason Coverstone, cutting to the inside. Can't find him. Tyler Aronzo makes his first three-pointer of the second half right here to crank the lead up to 10 points. When I was about to talk about that, he's had a difficult time shooting over top, maybe a little bit of Rick Wright, but he's done a lot better job here in the second half. And Wright, speaking of him, gets easy two points. That is a nice pass going inside by Williams. I mean, that's, that's bread and butter right there. If you can seal off a guy as tall as Aaron's at 6'8", Get that easy seal right at the bucket. That'll be easy, easy buckets. And that basketball will go out on Connor Platt. And Trinity gets the ball back, trying to reduce this lead just a little bit more. As number 11, Jeremy Carlisle brings the basketball up. All the way over to Williams, back to Carey. Goes to the top of the key. Three-point shot is up and good right over Mason Coverstone. Well, you can see Coach Platt a little frustrated because he definitely switched up that matchup. He's having Coverstone guard carry now just because of how well he shot in the first half. And Connor Platt just wasn't doing a good job running him off that three-point line. Tyler Aarons, two points, no good. Or rebounded by number 23, Johnson. Balled way up to Williams. Three-point basket up and no good. Rebounded, actually not rebounded at all. And it'll go out of bounds. Forcers take possession. 
That's what we were talking about. That's a quick three from Williams. Maybe not very well advised. No rebounders in position. Bush to Tyler Aarons. Back to Bush. Goes to the inside. Goes up for two. And a charging violation called on Mike Bush. Coach Ty Platt saying that the that Thaddeus Johnson was in the restricted area. Apparently the official did not see that. I'm not, I'm not too sure if he was or not. Anyways, first personal foul on Mike Bush, team first of the second half. And Williams has done a really good job of that. We saw no call towards the beginning of the first half. Just the referee sort of let that one go. Not letting this one go though, and if his feet are outside, that's an easy call for the official. Johnson to Williams. All the way across the court to Jeremy, and three-point basket up and good. That's just a good find, cross court. He's got power behind that ball. That 10-point lead quickly put the two and turnover on Tyler Aaron's Trinity basketball. Substitution for Trinity number two, Greg Carlisle coming in for Rick Wright. So you're replacing seven feet one with five foot nine. That's very interesting. Well, of course, he won't be guarding Tyler Aarons, just subbing in some more <laughs> guard play here, not, not trying to sub position wise, but I think they're definitely gonna be able to do it. Right scored, but you see the brothers coming out and score, hitting those cross court threes. That's gonna be another lead for the uh, Trinity Trojans. Yeah, that's quick 11 points for Trinity, as now 46 11. to 47. Mike Bush now with three of his own, and that goes in 49-47. Lead changing once again to the Foresters. I mean, we just mentioned Jeremy Carlisle knocking one down, but then right on the other end against his brother, Mike Bush, wants it back. Great crossover by Jeremy Carlisle, not able to make the two-point jumper. Mike Bush with the ball, bringing it up for the Foresters, crosses over, goes to the inside, layup goes up, and finally goes inside. 51-47, Foresters up by four, with a little over 17 minutes left to go here in the second half. Well, no, we talked about this at the half, but Mike Bush was not scoring in the first half. He was just assisting and doing a good job of it. Doing a better job here, though, getting right off the bat scoring for the Foresters. Yeah, good job by Andrew Yoder, keeping that ball in play. Connor Platt to Tyler Aarons. Tyler goes to the inside. Oh, my gosh. H.U. Bench calling for a flop. Very little contact against Tyler Aarons. Well, there's definitely contact there, and he was set. The question was basically where he got hit, because you saw he sort of got hit on the side. Definitely a little acting involved. You know, he didn't get hit hard enough to knock that over. But if you're, if you're Aaron's and you're making that pass, you got to be careful, because Williams now taking two charges. you got to know that he's looking for that. Jeremy brings the ball up for the Trojans, goes to the inside. Pass tipped away and stolen by Andrew Yoder. Foul on Williams. That is his third personal foul. Well, Williams is really getting in the mix, but you got to be careful. You know, if you're talking about maybe Junior Scott, or if you're talking about some of the other guys for the Foresters, you want that energy. You want them picking up fouls, but now that's only the second. Excuse us, not the third. Um, I mean, still, though, that, that energy is what you want to see. you got to be careful because he's doing so much for the Trojans right now. Mike Bush bringing the ball up. Andrew Yoder doing a great job on the defensive side. Now Bush. Called for a traveling violation. Sometimes you got to be careful on that step back because Mike Bush, obviously, he, that's one of his moves. That step back is just part of his move. But if you pick up that ball just a little too soon and then try to take those two steps back, Bush might try to light you up. Bush just making sure that they're on the right side of the court. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure it matters too much at the other end. And Jeremy Carlisle bringing the ball up, giving it to his brother Greg. Great kind of blocks off Mike Bush as 24 carry. Starts to go to the inside. Out to Williams. Goes to the inside. And draws contact from Tyler Aarons. And Williams does a good job of getting those two points up. 49-51. Forster still lead the Trojans with a little over 16 minutes left to go in this ball game. You can just contribute a lot of this mentality though to Boomer Roberts, coach for the Trojans. They are just mentally in this game. They've never gotten out of it. Mike Bush trying to get a floater to go. Rebounded by Johnson. All the way over to Greg Carlisle. He's going to cut to the inside. Back out to his brother Jeremy. Three-point basket, no good. And jump ball will be called. 
That's a grown man move by Thaddeus Johnson and Mason Coverstone. I mean, not to call him out or anything, but he just got manhandled. He got a hand on that ball, but it was tied up like a piece of cake. Full media timeout coming to you. 51-49, and Forcers to lead the Trojans. We will be right back, right here from Platte Arena. family has to make one of the biggest decisions of their lives. They need more than a realtor. I need a house. They need an extraordinary team of experts working day in and day out to provide service and knowledge to get the job done right. Anything short of intensity, passion, and drive is unacceptable. Introducing the Ness Brothers, an unstoppable force of realtors here to turn the biggest decision of your life into a walk in the park. In five, four, three, two, one, for the music. Hello and welcome to FDN News. I'm Kelsey Cruz. Hi everyone and welcome down to Forest Glen Park. I'm Logan Hines. Hello, it's Hannah here on Forest Radio 105.5 FM. W H U. That was just. All right, back here in Plato Arena, 51-49. Forsters lead the Trojans as Trojans. Have possession of the ball. We can take out the ball right underneath the basket. Pass to Johnson, over to Williams, back to Carey. Outside to number three, Schroeder. Greg on the outside. Carey now on the left side of the three point arc. Williams getting taken up by Aarons. No contact there. Aarons with the rebound. Bush going and taking it all himself. Easy layup for him. You see him flexing a little bit. I'll give him credit for that. That's a grown man move on Tyrone Carey. Number two, Greg Carlisle going up and over. Andrew Yoder, Johnson now top of the key with the basketball. Williams going to the inside against, Carly, uh, against Connor Platt. Ball kind of being batted around a little bit, and a jump ball will be called. Well, if, if you're Connor Platt, there, you, you got to just grab that ball. You got to jump on it, make sure that you don't lose it, because you saw. Just getting from behind was Thaddeus Johnson. Tying that ball up again. Possession arrow is going towards Huntington. Andrew Yoder inbounding the ball, giving it over to Mike Bush. Mike Bush sprinting at the court as he gives it to Connor Platt. Ball mishandled as gives it to Tyler Ahrens. Tyler looking for Mike. Can't get it to him. Pass outside to Andrew Yoder. Andrew Yoder, a little cross up. He's going to go to the inside. Back out to Connor Platt. Pull up, two point shot, and that's good. Again, took a, a couple of steps to the inside, only for a two point basket, but still up by 655 49 with 14 and a half minutes left to go as Greg Carlisle misses three point basket. Rebounded by Johnson. Now, Carey with the ball up top on the left side. Driving to the inside, easy two points for him. He just goes straight to the baseline. 30 second timeout called by the Trojans. That's just a strong move. And you see Johnson and Carey, again, those guys, 200 and 220 pounds. That's just a strong pick and roll, and that's hard to stop. And you saw Tyler Aarons there. He was sort of wanting to hover to make sure that Carey didn't get the ball on the inside. Or excuse me, Johnson. Carey rolled hard to the bucket. It was a good job by them, and that's what the Forest is really doing a good job of, except for these past few minutes. They've been shutting down the pick and roll, and they've been doing a good job of it. Obviously, maintaining a four-point gap. Offensively, they like to start hitting some more, but they're doing a decent job right now. Yeah, definitely Foresters need to think about extending this lead a little bit, and what that's going to take is just getting some defensive stops on the other end. Trinity doing a great job of going to the inside and getting a couple of easy layups. Haven't really been knocking down their, their outside shots here recently. Towards the beginning of the second half, they were doing a great job, and that's how they made that 10-point deficit into a one-point uh, on to them leading for, uh, for one point. Again, Mike Bush 
being trailed by number 11, Carlisle. He will pick up his first personal foul as that is their second team foul. Number 34, Rick Wright comes in for number 23, Thaddeus Johnson. Ball going in to Mike Bush. Thinking about going in towards the left side, doesn't. Trevor Lockwood also checks back in for the Foresters with Mike Bush up top looking for Trevor. Couldn't get it to him. Pull up jumper blocked by Carey. That's just not a smart play by Bush. He, he liked to do that last season. He was generally pretty good with it, but you just gotta be careful when you're going up against tall guys like this. Pass tipped out of bounds and that will stay with the Trojans. As number 24, Carey will take it out himself. Carey really looking to inbound it to Greg Carlisle there. Three point basket and that is good. That's a big three point basket by the junior. Well, that's a miscommunication by the sophomores. Yoder and Platt just got a little hung up there. Both went with the same man, and that's just something that can't happen. That's another three points, bringing it within one possession game. Yoder, left side, passing it all the way to Mike Bush. Mike, pull a three-point shot. It's a little short. Well, and that's not a smart shot from him. You're going to your left. You're dropping backwards. Like, if you're dropping back to your right, maybe you can take that shot, but it's not smart from him. Connor Platt looking a little confused as they call a foul on number 20, Mason Coverstone, his third. That's team's third foul. As number two, Greg Carlisle at the line, shooting two free throws. Carlisle's first free throw is up and good. As number 35, Kyle Platt and number 14, Junior Scott, return for the Foresters. And Greg Carlisle shooting now eight of eight. See if he can make it nine and nine. Throwing to Jinxon, but I mean he's been he's been doing good on the season. Carlisle's second free throw up and good. As now the Trojans lead by one. Junior I think Scott. Something, something as you see Junior Scott here, something that's going to play into this game later is that pressure because you see the Foresters they convert on this time. Good job on that, and they've been doing a decent job. But that full court pressure, I'm guessing, is going to start a wear and tear. And that is going to be a foul, easy foul call on number 11, Jeremy Carlisle. That is huge. Junior Scott just getting in his face a little bit and just being shoved to the ground. And his number four, Williams, comes back in for the Trojans, replacing 24 carry. Devin Murder also comes back in for Connor Platt. Just a little bit of acting from Scott, just a little bit. But sometimes you get thrown him and you got to make the ref believe it, you got to make him see it. That's, what, that's oh. what you like to see as well. No, just whenever you see a guy come in like that, getting a guy's head, getting a guy that started, that's what you like to see. Trojan coach getting a little vocal about that flop. I'd say now the Foresters and Trinity are even for flops. Now Kyle Platt up top, way up top for him to have the ball. Yeah, bad place for him to pick up the ball too. Not one of your ball handlers usually, but walking back to half court and picking up the ball. Devin Murder going to the inside and uh, being called for a foul. That'll be his first personal foul, team fourth. Here with 12 minutes, 38 seconds left to go in this ball game. Well, Boomer Roberts has just done a good job. You can see by the way his players, they're always lining up. Anytime one of the Foresters drive, they're always lining up for that charge. Whether they take it or not, that depends. But they're just always in position to do that, and it's also affecting how the Foresters attack on offense. Jeremy Carlisle out to Williams. Williams drives down the baseline, goes to right. And the underneath official will be calling a foul on number 32, Trevor Lockwood. Saw a little bit of body right there as that will be Trevor's first personal foul. Team fifth now. And Rick Wright at the line. Rick Wright is two of three from the line so far this season. That's the thing that's been interesting about this game. Not many fouls called. We're getting up here maybe towards the bonus. Trinity might be in the bonus soon, but both teams really have not shot too many free throws this game. And Rick Wright's second free throw about ready to be attempted as Devin Murder comes in for Andrew Yoder. It's up and good. Man, that seven foot 
One big man yeah. looks pretty comfortable there at the line, Bray. Well, I will say, remember when Yao Ming used to shoot free throws? It's almost like he's shooting down at the rim. That's sort of what that reminds me of right there. <laughs> I feel like it's got to be a little easier there. You probably don't know too much about that. Junior Scott dribbling and driving. Ball tipped away and goes towards the Trojans. Another turnover for the Foresters as the Trojans lead by one. Number 33, Bauer, and number 12, Schmidt, come in for the Trojans. You can just see here, this is where the Foresters have to start being careful when Mike Bush is off the floor. you got to do a better job offensively. Junior Scott not really setting up offense. He's sort of just you know dribbling and trying to kick out. And Junior needs to be careful because he's beginning to be very physical on the defensive side. As number four, Williams puts up a three-point shot. No good. Rebounded by Kyle Platt over the Junior Scott. Scott brings the ball up, directing traffic just a little bit, and as that ball is tipped away by Greg. Substitutions for the Foresters, number 44, Tyler Aarons, and number three, Connor Platt. Also, substitution for Trinity, number 24, Tyrone Carey. Mike Bush now with the ball. Left side of the court going in the inside. Almost stolen by Williams. All the way over to Kyle Platt. Three-point basket up and no good. And then Murder gets slapped in the mouth by Williams. Officially didn't see it. Ball being tipped away by Connor Platt. Good job by him, but just getting the ball on it. But Tyrone Williams is Willi on the ground. Sorry, it looks Williams like he may have landed on his wrist. Like he's he's kind of writhing in agony down there. You saw him hit. Um, ball was hit clean as well by Platt. And we will be taking an official's timeout right here as trainers are on their way to assist Williams. That's that's one of those scary situations where you go up as a player, the ball was tipped cleanly, and then you sort of roll over and land on your wrist. You just got to be careful when you're attacking like that because, you know, trying to get the foul call, you're trying to make it look like you got hit a little bit. Hopefully he didn't get hit on the actual attempt. Just if he landed on that, that, that might hurt him a little bit. And we will take a quick break with this injury timeout. 57-58, Trojans lead the Foresters. We'll be back. Um, when I set foot on Huntington's campus for the first time, I just knew that this was the place I was supposed to be, and that decision forever changed my life. I was a new Christian at the time, um, but I grew so much while I was at Huntington. I felt known, and I felt valued there, and the education department was just so great. In fact, I found a job before I even graduated, and I believe that's because my classes at Huntington equipped me to do so. I'm fulfilling my goal of serving others through teaching, and because of Huntington's impact on me, I now have that desire to pass on those values to all my students. In high school, my life felt empty in a way. I was living in a world full of temptations and distractions, and I, I needed to be transformed, I guess you could say. Here at Huntington, there are many ways that I experienced that transformation. As a film major, I feel encouraged by my friends, upperclassmen, and by my professors. And we are back here at Platt Arena. As Carey comes in. And number 12, Schmidt with three-point basket up short, no good. Tyler Ahrens gets the rebound, gives it over to Mike Bush. Bush analyzes the four. He's about passing it to Platt. He does. Kyle Platt, that is. Back to Bush. And they pass it to Connor Platt. Bush now goes to the inside. Gives it to Kyle Platt. Three-point basket up. No good. Kind of rims around. Kyle Platt has just not been able to get into a rhythm yet this game. We saw him hit last year. He just hasn't gotten to that point yet so far. Carey, three-point basket. Good. You got to be out there guarding him. We talked about that first half as well, no, but that's that's exactly the point that you got to make if you're Coach Platt. You just got to get out on him, make maybe run him off a little bit, and have help rotate down. Well, that's a good job by Carey by realizing that nobody was on him, and I mean he's been hot all game. So I mean if he has any opportunity to take a three-point shot, he's going to as Connor Platt now passing it away from Mike Bush, and that's going to be a turnover. Number 23. Thaddeus Johnson will check back in for the Trojans. And number 24, Andrew Yoder, checks in for Connor Platt for the Foresters. Jeremy Carlisle now with the ball. 10 minutes, 15 seconds left to go in this ball game. We are halfway done with the second half. Almost traveling call on Greg. 
Jeremy now, three-point basket up and a little short yet again. Who's on target. Mike Bush has had that hand in his face and he plays a little short. Bush with the ball, down to Tyler Aarons. He's gonna go up and draws a little contact, no foul. That's good defense by Sam Bauer. He's just straight up. 24 carry, he's going up for two points. He gets it. 63-57. Worcester's trailing the Trojans. Trinity's just doing a good job right now of dictating the tempo of the game. Huntington wants to slow it down offensively. That's fine with the Trojans. And Mike Bush does a little bit of contact as he goes up for a two-point basket. That basket is no good. As number two, Greg Carlisle will pick up his first personal foul, team fourth here in the second half. At the line will be Mike Bush. Shooting two baskets. This is when the Foresters really need to start capitalizing on free throws. You get down to this point in the game where, again, Trinity's just doing such a good job on the foul line. They're also not fouling the Foresters too much. You talk about four fouls past the halfway point in the first half. And Mike Bush is now two of two from the line. Ball going to be brought up the court by Jeremy Carlisle. Jeremy, a junior, passing it to his junior brother. Greg, he gets it down low with a carry. That's a, that's a that's fantastic a, oh pass. It's like you're trying to hit a wide receiver lofting over top. I mean, that was just well placed. I mean, that was perfect. I don't know how that could have been any more perfect. Devin Murder going baseline, passing way out to Kyle Platt over to Bush. Bush, step back. Platt, three point shot now. Hits the rim, no good. Rebounded by Bauer, now brought up by Greg. That's a good shot from Platt. You just got to knock that down. That's good, good ball movement. You're set, your feet are set. You're going right towards the basket. Carry now, going towards the inside. Out to Johnson. Johnson again, thinking about going to the inside. Pull up jumper. That is good. Johnson and Carry, what you got to say? They are having a field day today. They're really able to do whatever they want on the offensive end, Noah. 67-59 with a little over eight minutes to go here in this championship game. Devin Murr going to the inside. It's a little out of control, but the official will bail him out. That foul will be on number two, Greg Carlisle. That will be his second personal foul, team fifth. Both teams at five team fouls. As Devin Murr goes to the line, Shooting two. Devin Murderer's first free throw attempt is up and good. As number three, Sam Schroeder will check back in for number 11, Jeremy Carlisle. And number 24, Andrew Yoder checks back in for the Foresters. As Devin Murderer's second free throw attempt up and good again. Two for two from the line. Number two, Greg Carlisle bringing the ball up for the, for the Trojans. A little shimmy shake. Two ball up and no good. Rebounded by Aarons. Giving it to Bush to bring out the floor. Aarons kind of looking for the trail. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been hitting, and he's been hitting all the season, not just tonight. Yeah, he's always been a fairly decent three-point shooter. Andrew going to the inside. Tyler Aarons. Throwing it down and drawing contact. Well, what a great dish by Yoder. He made a very strong point of not drawing the charge there. You saw, I believe it was Bauer slide over. Just a great job finding Aaron's there. Media timeout being called with 7.42 left in the game. 63-67, Trojans lead the Foresters. We will be right back from Platt Arena. It's just an incredible feeling to know that you are handing these folks the keys to a life-changing house. It's not, it's not just a house. It's not just walls and windows. It's a home that they get to bring up their family in, bring up their kids in, and show their kids what it means to get out of poverty and to make a better life for themselves. My name is Casey Cole Morgan. I'm the Executive Director at Huntington County Habitat for Humanity.
We are a construction company. We are a mortgage company. We are a financial institution. We are advocates for families. We are a budgeting center. And on top of it, uh, we are also a retail store. So we, have, we wear a lot of hats as an organization. Um, our main focus is to serve the community any way we can. And so we want to help families em empower themselves and, and, and find a better life uh, through, through the process of home ownership. The, the need is so great. And that doesn't just mean families who are homeless. Welcome back to Platt Arena here in Huntington, Indiana, as the Foresters of Huntington trail the Trojans of Trinity International University. Tyler Aarons at the free throw line shooting his bonus shot. Actually, his and one shot, I should say. And that is no good, rebounded by Bauer. Those free throws are really gonna be needed here towards the end of this game with seven and a half minutes left to go. Johnson going to the inside, almost travels, goes up and just flings it up there and it ends up going in. He wanted the end one call there after Aaron picked one up. Didn't get it that time, but it was a strong move by him. Bush, three point basket is up and good. That is a huge shot by Bush, 66-69. Number two, Greg Carlisle with the ball. Out to Schroeder and back to Carey. Carey giving it to Bauer. Bauer goes up and a body will be called and looks like Devin Murder was in the restricted area. Yeah, it's an easy call for the official. They're looking at the feet every time. I think that might be the second time we've seen somebody's feet inside the arc tonight. First call that's going to be called for a block, though, based on that. You just got to be careful, though. Obviously, it's hard. You, you know you just want to line up, take that take that charge, but you've got to make sure you're all the way outside the circle. You don't really think about looking down at your feet, no. That was Devin Murner's second personal foul as Connor Platt comes in for him. Team six, both teams have six fouls. Rebound! Bauer, second free throw up and good. Substitution for the Trojans, number four, Williams comes back in. His wrist is really taped up there. So we'll have to see how comfortable he is with that wrap on his left wrist. Bush yeah. bringing it up for the Foresters. Screen by Aarons. Bush goes to the inside and gives the Coverstone block, goes up, and a foul is drawn by Coverstone. He will be shooting two. And the foul will go on number three, Sam Schroeder. Schroeder gets in. We saw him again last night. He doesn't usually score too much. He's averaging two points on the season, but he's just a feisty guy. And defensively, he's a big presence too, Noah, because whenever you're able to just get inside, have another body to pick up fouls and just foul hard inside. And when you're not able to convert on the free throw line, that's another big part of the game. That was Schroeder's first personal foul as Coverstone misses his first attempt. You just got to hit. Oh, no, these goodness. are these are puppies. They're gonna they're gonna really add up as Mason Coverstone misses both of them at the line. Forcers could be down by one instead, down by four. And all the way from Carey to Williams. Williams goes up with his left hand. No good. Thaddeus Johnson goes up, gets the rebound, and that two-point basket is good. 66 to 72. Trojans lead the Foresters with six minutes. 15 seconds left. That is Johnson's killing it. He's just streaking in from the wing. No foresters are picking him up. He's doing a great job today. Ball was tipped, so it will remain with the foresters as number 11, Jeremy Carlisle, comes in for number three, Schroeder. Schroeder again putting in some good minutes here in Platt Arena as Bush with the ball now. Bush puts up a three, no good, off to the left. Rebounded by Greg Carlisle. Carlisle bringing the ball up, giving it to Williams, back to Carey at the top of the key. He drives in. Jeremy Carlisle now gives it to Thaddeus, you know, uh, to Thaddeus Johnson. Misses three-point basket, rebounded by Mike Bush. Mike Bush looks like he's, he's injured or hurt or something, just the face that he's making. 
but he's going to go inside, pass out to Connor Platt, three-point basket up, and good! Yeah, Mike Bush, just to comment on that real quick, he's, uh, he's been holding his ankle a little bit differently. He's going over the trainers here as we're going to timeout. And that timeout will be a full timeout, so we will take it along with him. 69-72, we will be back. FDN News is our campus news station. And we are just a news station that shines Christ's light on campus and in the Huntington community. Whether that be going to a presidential rally or talking about the meal plans on campus, um, everything we do, we do for the glory of God. With news, you have such a great opportunity to go out to hear people's stories and tell their stories and to be light and to share that light. So my goal for FDN News is first and foremost that students would learn, that they would engage, they would learn a little bit about themselves, about communicating with others, refine their skills, and become expert storytellers for the kingdom of Christ. The benefit to coming to Huntington and being in the Forrester Digital Network is you get hands-on experience. So we have some freshmen coming in that week one, they are taking a camera out and they are teaming up with an upperclassman and refining their skills. So by the time you graduate, you've got four years. Back here in Platt Arena, five minutes, 31 seconds left to go. Forster's Trail of Trojans, 69-72. With it being the Trojans' ball. Big five and a half minutes for the Foresters. As now Jeremy Carlisle brings the ball up for the Trojans. Going towards the right side of the court. Giving it to Williams back to Carlisle. Downside, Carey. He's going to take it even further down. Great ball movement by both teams, by the Trojans. Bank shot by Jeremy Carlisle. That wasn't a bank shot, that was a off the rim bank shot. Off the rim bank shot. Every I'm part sorry. of the rim and the backboard and the rim. 69-75 with that being a three point shot. Bush giving it to Lockwood. Woo. Lockwood goes up for an easy two, almost coming up from behind. Greg Carlisle almost blocked that. You and I have been watching Mike Bush for just over a year now. It's never not fun to watch him play. I agree. Jeremy Carlisle giving it to his brother Greg. He goes up for two, and Thaddeus, uh, Thaddeus Johnson kind of using Trevor Lockwood. Just something to go up on top of, and number four Williams will get another foul on him. Williams trying to say he didn't really have a lot of contact with him, but it doesn't matter that he picks up his third personal foul. Well, even Teams if you cause somebody to trip, you know, you're, you're going to get called for that foul because as soon as somebody hits the ground, ref's got to make a call on that. Definitely. And Mason Coverstone at the line, shooting the one in bonus. Up and good. 72 75 with four minutes, 32 seconds left to go in this championship contest here in Platt Arena. Coverstone getting ready to make his second attempt. Up and good, 73 to 75. Forster's trail by two. Jeremy Carlisle bringing it towards the inside. Back out to his brother Greg. Three point basket, good. And timeout by Trinity. That'll be a full timeout and we will take it along with them. 78 to 73 right here in Platt Arena. The Global Initiatives uh, degree that we're offering is uh, seeking to equip folks who are interested in applying a, a ministry education to uh, cross-cultural work. So somebody who's looking to uh, do holistic ministry, somebody who's looking to uh, engage in the business for transformation or business as missions model would find uh, some equipping through our Global Initiatives degree. Our Global Youth Ministries degree is designed to prepare people for leadership in youth ministry quite simply anywhere in the globe. It's for men and women who are already in youth ministry or for people who are simply preparing to leave youth ministry. One of the things I like about the pastoral leadership 
track is that Luke and Karen, who worked on developing it, consulted with church leaders so that people preparing for ministry uh, leadership in the church would have the skills and the knowledge that they need. Some of what uh, I'd want our program to be known for is, is being really clear-minded about linking our own program vision with the Lord's vision. Back here on Plot Arena, 78-73, Trojans lead the Foresters with 4 minutes, 19 seconds left. A good timeout called by the Trojans, just trying to calm their players down after that big three-point attempt and setting up a trap. Actually, no trap, just a little bit of press. Mike Bush with the ball. They've been doing that all game, too. It's just... As you continue to put full court pressure on, you're just wearing Mike Bush down a little more every time he has to bring the ball up. Tyler Aarons in to out all the way around to Andrew Yoder. Three point basket, no good. Rebounded by Johnson as Williams brings up the ball. Left wrist looking pretty comfortable right there, dribbling the ball up. And that'll be a foul on Mason Coverstone. Team seven, so he will go to the one and one. Coverstone. Gets his fourth personal foul call on him. At the line, shooting the one-on-one -on -one will be Carey, Tyrone Carey. Ball up and no good. Coverstone with it, giving it to Bush. Three minutes, 40 seconds left to go. Right here in this contest as Bush passes it to Connor Platt. Back to Bush. And a foul on number two, Greg Carlisle. Kept on grabbing Tyler Aaron's shirt, they were saying, and so that is a foul. So <laughs> Well, I mean, when you're you're small, I used to do that. It's just fun, you know? Whenever you get matched against a big guy like that. But Tyler Aaron's, I don't know, just because of how high up he is. You, what are you gonna do, no? I mean, you can't really uh like tie a shoe or anything like that, you know. Third personal foul on Carl on Greg Carlisle, but basket missed it doesn't by affect Tyler you. Aarons. Exactly, it doesn't affect you whenever the force just keep missing free throws. Jeremy giving it to Carey. Carey kind of directing the half just a little bit down low. Crossover a little bit, going one-on-one -on -one against Tyler Aarons. Tyler does a great job of staying flat on his feet. Williams now layup foul on Andrew Yoder. Yoder doing a bad job of staying flat on his feet that time. Yeah. I mean, you, when you got to come out against a guy like that, losing track of the ball, and then he just drove right past Yoder. That was just a strong move to the basket, though. You just get a full head of steam downhill. You know you're going right towards that block on the opposite side. That's a good move. That will be Yoder's second personal foul, team's eighth, as Williams... Is at the line shooting two baskets. Both teams not doing a very good job at all at making their free throws. First one up and good. 79 73 now with three minutes, nine seconds left to go. Now his second free throw attempt is up and good. Yoder getting it into Bush. Bush will just bring it up himself. Going towards the inside, going up for a layup, no good. And rebounded by Williams. Bush wanting a foul for contact. Williams sprinting up the court, getting it to carry. Back out to Greg Carlisle, up for three points, no good. Rebounded by Tyler Ahrens. And giving it to Mike Bush. Now up the floor to Connor Platt. All the way over to Andrew Yoder, down to him, Mason Coverstone. Bad pass inside as it gets stolen yet again. And now Jeremy Carlisle Strong. with an easy oh layup Strong off the backboard. Strong move by him. I mean, that's just a good job of getting Mike Bush to come up a little bit, get off the balls of his feet. Strong move. Trinity now up by nine, 82 to 73 with 2.22 left to go. Bush going to the inside, getting it stolen away by Greg Carlisle. What defense by Greg, getting it to Jeremy, back to Greg, over to Carey. Carey takes a three-point shot, and that's good. Big shot by Carey. 85-73, that'll be a full timeout. We will take it along with them. 85-73 with two minutes, five seconds left. We'll be back.
Kevin Platarena, 85 to 73. Trojans lead the Foresters. As Foresters have possession on the ball, Andrew Yoder getting it in to Mike Bush. Trinity still going to keep pressure on Mike Bush as he brings it across the line. Bush going to the inside. He's going to try for a layup. Out to Andrew Yoder. Three-point basket up. No good. Rebounded by Aarons. He's going to go up for two. Easy two points for him. Good job keeping that ball high. As now Connor Platt going to make a foul against number 11, Jeremy Car Car Carlisle. Excuse me. That's going to be Connor Platt's second personal foul, team ninth. Next team foul will put uh, Trinity into the double bonus. Carlisle up and no good on his first. Mike Bush taking it across the 10 second line. Behind the back, going towards the inside. Almost traveled, but that will be good. And a timeout called by Coach Platt. And that's going to be another full, but we will stay right here. 77-85, Foresters still trail by eight points. Bray, what do the Foresters need to do to keep getting that deficit down? Well, really, what you're going to have to rely on now is um, Trinity missing free throws. To be totally honest, you put yourself in a situation now defensively where you're down uh, in eight points now, I mean, that's technically three possessions, but you know that Trinity's going to make a bucket here or there. They're going to hit a few free throws. So what you got to do is you got to come down, you got to score quick, you got to play strong defense. Now, if I'm Coach Platt, I don't know that I want to start fouling this early. You know, try to play some defense and just force traps. And I would say my personal favor is just to aggressively trap ball. If you pick up a foul, you stop the clock and you make them shoot. Maybe you get the ball back. But just fouling immediately every single time, if Trinity starts hitting free throws, it's just going to be hard for Huntington to come back from this deficit. Yeah, I agree. And really, Trinity, they just need to keep making smart decisions, really. They're doing a great job already of stealing away uh, the ball from Mike. Bush there a couple of times. Really, Greg Carlisle has done a great job of guarding Mike in this contest. They need to keep that up because when you keep Mike Bush down, you keep the Foresters down, really, because, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what Mike Bush has done for this team. And making his college debut is going to be number five, Jaden Sutton came in for Andrew Yoder, and I'm going to guess that Jaden's going to start fouling. That's the main purpose of him. He's going to go inside. Ball all the way over to Greg and foul on Mike Bush. Well, again, that's the thing. If you're the Foresters, you're either fouling immediately or you're playing defense. It doesn't do you any good to run five seconds off the clock and then try to foul. You either try to foul ball or you try to go get ball, but it's got to be one or the other. I'd say almost like if you if they feel threatened that the ball is going to get across half court, then foul. I mean, would you say that? And then if you can keep them across and get them 10 seconds, then keep them over there, get that I violation, mean, and then you get the ball on this side of the no, court. To be honest, though, Trinity is not giving up the ball. That only works, obviously, if you're able to force a turnover. You're not able to force a turnover, then it yeah. doesn't do any good. Yeah. You're running 10 seconds off the clock every time. Again, you're down three possessions, turning True. into four possessions now. A minute 30, I just you either got to start fouling or you got to start turning the ball over quickly. Greg Carlisle at the line shooting a second free throw. Up and no good, rebounded by Tyler Ahrens. Mike Bush now trying to get the ball down the court as quickly as possible. Goes towards the inside against Williams. Draws pump fake. Mike Bush, I'm sorry, actually Taylor, Tyler Ahrens almost gets the rebound. Williams. Chucks it down the court against uh, to Jeremy Carlisle. Easy two points. Mason Coverstone now with the basketball. One minute left to go in this contest. Connor Platt giving it to Mike Bush. They need a basket. Andrew Yoder tipped. And now number 11, Jeremy Carlisle. If they were just smart, they would just run out the clock. But And then there you go. They did not take the shot. I was going to say that would be a poor decision on their part to take that shot. Well, they will need to take a shot just because the difference between shot clock and game clock, obviously, you don't want to turn over, but they run it down as far as they can. 24 carry with the ball. He goes to the inside, takes Mason, Coverstone all the way to the rack. 90 to 77 with 30 seconds left to go. Shot clock turned off. And 10, Mike Bush with the ball over to Tyler Ahrens. 
up for three points. No good. Rebound by Johnson. 15 seconds now. Ball across the 10 point, the 10 second line. 10 seconds left on the game clock. And 90 to 77 will be the final score. Almost a turn over there. But yes, 90 to 77. Trojans take the Nest Bros Championship right here in Plata Arena. When we come back, we will have your final game statistics right here on FDN Sports. The alumni office at Huntington University is really here to stay in touch with the alumni and graduates, as well as provide resources to them so they can reconnect. It's just really important to us that we keep in touch with them and then let them know what's going on on campus as well, things that they might want to continue to stay involved with or maybe participate in an alumni gathering. I started getting involved as an alumni board member and we would do various projects throughout the university, throughout the year. Just being able to meet people who graduated and to listen to their stories about the university, back then the college, and how it's grown today, it just, it's really an honor and a privilege to be a Forester. I knew that this was going to be the university that I was going to graduate from, and I have friends here that will be lifelong. So one of the things that's kind of fun about our department is we have uh, regular gatherings. Uh, we call them Friday at Fairchild's house and Dr. Mark Fairchild hosts these gatherings for our majors and we get together, uh, I guess it's about once a month. First I was like, that's kind of weird, like we're going to go hang out at a professor's house. Um, but for my Greek class he offered extra credit if we would go, so I was like, it's worth it, I'll take some friends with me and try it out and it was a ton of fun. I think that's one thing that's kind of unique about Huntington. We really are able to um, joke and, and get to know each other outside of the classroom on a personal level. Um, we really become friends, I think, with our students. The experience of being able to sit in a professor's house and engage in scholarly discussion and informal discussion over um, something faith-based is, I think, um, very unique to this university. If you look at a variety of the research regarding the top skill sets that employers are looking for, communication always ranks top five. Many times it's the top three. These are skills that are far more important, not only in job, but in life, in family context, in social context, in professional contexts. One thing that's different about Huntington University as a Christian college is that we have a journalism major. Other Christian universities and the Council of Christian Colleges and Universities have a communication major in which you then uh, subspecialize in these different areas. We have an actual major in journalism, an actual major in public relations, an actual major in communication studies. Teachers try to incorporate different aspects of like the Bible into or, or core curriculum. There's so many things that can spark, you know, you know, excitement, enthusiasm. But here you're reminded that in all of that fluff, in all of that glam, that Christ is the center and Christ is core.
One aspect of Huntington University that I think makes us distinctive is the fact that 100% of our teaching faculty have PhDs. Also, um, here at Huntington University, the communication department, we offer two very different perspectives on the same field of communication. So we have two professors here that view the field quite differently and I think the students benefit from that. I look in the Gospels and I see Jesus interacting with people. I mean, he was a really good communicator and understood people well. That's kind of what communication is about, trying to um, be clear about what you're saying and to understand um, people. And so by, by practicing communication, I think we can become better at doing that and I can be more like Christ in that way. At Lakeview Middle School, I'm a 7th grade language arts teacher. Uh, I primarily teach 12, 13, and sometimes 14 year olds reading and writing. One of the unique things about the teacher education program at Huntington University is the uh, relationships that are developed between the faculty and students. They are super thoughtful people. They want to be a part of your life. They want to, you know, be your mentor and, and help you through this process of becoming the best teacher that you could possibly be. I have a very good relationship with a lot of my professors from Huntington and I think that's because they asked me questions that were even outside of the classroom. And then after class, like I wanted to tell them about things that were going on in my life and the exciting things um, with teaching. And because our class sizes are small, we get to know them as people, we get to know their strengths, weaknesses, because then we know how, how best to help them. And it also simply makes the whole uh, experience a lot more enjoyable. I still use a lot of the activities I learned with them with my students today. And so it was really helpful to uh, have that time with them and especially those conversations with them. I think that Huntington prepared me incredibly well for the teaching position I have now. From the beginning of when I started at Huntington, I felt like it was a place where I was able to grow as an individual as well as in the intended profession that I wanted to be in now. We actually have all, a number of elementary and middle school and uh, secondary programs. Each person that comes through the elementary program gets at least a couple of uh, different certifications. And then we have um, secondary or high school programs in a, the typical content areas like history education, English education, uh, biology education, chemistry education. Yes, you're going to be exhausted and yes, you're going to stay up crazy late writing lesson plans and making bulletin boards and curriculum. and and activities, but uh, get excited that this is going to prepare you very well for your future. I was able to figure out, even if I'm in a public school setting, how I can demonstrate my faith and show that like I am a Christian without explicitly saying it. Um, and I think that Huntington really allowed me to uh, develop a deeper understanding of what my faith was, and so that way I'm able to express my faith to, a stu to the students in a public school setting. And I do not think that I would be able to take on this role of a teacher if I had not had the structure and the support and the love from the departments and the professors at Huntington. And I'm happy to say we have a, we have a very good uh, success rate. Over the past five or six years, um, we've had a, within six months of graduation, we tend to average about a 90% employment rate I have been completely blessed by it, by the professors, by all the hands-on experience they've given us, and I, am, I feel pretty prepared now, which is a great feeling. What makes the HU Music Department special, I think, is basically the people that make up the department. It's like we're one big family. Instead of just friends coming together to sing and do music work, it's more like we're a family, like just brothers and sisters. Students have an opportunity to bond with one another in a smaller group. It gives us a chance to interact more closely with the students, uh, to answer all their kinds of questions that might uh, arise. The professors are really knowledgeable, very talented, and you can tell that they really care about individual students.
we incorporate the community sometimes, so it's really good to get to meet new people from Huntington and throughout the community and just to work with everyone. The choir performs lots of times out in area churches. The function of what we do here at Huntington is to try to make musicians and also God-honoring musicians. It's very much a supportive community in the HU Music Department. So not only are you getting an excellent music education, but you are developing as a person just because you're getting to know all these great people. Dr. Tanner Babb, I'm an assistant professor of psychology and also the head of the psychology department. Psychology is really a study of the self. It's a study of how our, our mind works, how we relate to people, friendship, dating, intimacy, conflict, and it's a class that meets college students right where they are. We have a very unique approach to teaching psychology. And I think... And welcome back to Plata Arena as we start to end out our broadcast with some uh, post-game thoughts. Really, Huntington doing a decent job uh, here tonight, but just fell pretty short as Huntington loses 77 to Trinity Inter International, 90-77. Uh, to 77. Really tough loss for Huntington. Uh, just kind of with some uh, post-game statistics here, but uh, kind of first, really, Huntington struggling just a little bit uh, only shooting 47%, but it doesn't really sound like they're struggling. They just missed uh, with some, uh, they missed key shots at some key times. But really, uh, Huntington did a decent job. So I'll just do some uh, post-game stats for us. Uh, Huntington shot 30 of 64 from the field with 36 rebounds. Uh, and 17 turnovers, four steals, 21 assists as a team. Mike Bush had nine of those assists. And uh, oh, Andrew Yoder had another six of those assists. Uh, but again, good job by uh, the Huntington University men. Uh, shooting 47% from the field with Mike Bush having 14 points, nine assists, Tyler Aarons 12 points and 10 rebounds. Another double-double for the junior as we... Uh, end this out. And then also for Trinity International, uh, a few uh, team statistics, uh, 33 for 65 uh, from the field, 36 rebounds, 11 turnovers, 5 steals, 19 assists, and uh, shot 51% from the field. Again, another great percentage for Trinity as Tyrone Carey uh, has 31, uh, shot 31 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and Thaddeus Johnson uh, 10 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, Bray, what were a couple of things that Bray? What were a couple of things that you thought? Well, I mean, as we're wrapping up here, it is really a good job uh, by Coach Booker. He did a really good job with Trinity International, and they uh, they kind of dominated the tournament. You saw that, and I mean, shout out to our guys. Their next game will be at the Grace College Tournament. Well, they'll be playing. Clark College, so we'll see you back here in a little while. Next home matchup will be against Bethel. That'll be November 28th. Until then, this is FDN Sports. I'm Bray Snyder with Noah Tobias.